Hey guys, Mike Tierney here with Princess Auto. Welcome to Tech Tips with Mike T. Today's episode, we're going to talk about trash pumps. So let's talk about pump limitations. So the trash pumps, whether they're two inch, three inch, four inch, or larger, they have a limitation on the distance they can draw into themselves and the distance that they can move water from them. So because they're an e a gas engine, we want to make sure that the pump is out of the water. So we have an inlet side, which we call the suction side. That's maximum suction lift will always be around 26 feet from that water source to the pump. The discharge side, which we call the head or total dynamic head when we combined everything, will have a maximum depending on the pump line, the manufacturer, the pump size, um, some they can range from 85 feet to 200 feet. It all depends on the size of the drive system, the size of the pump housing, and uh, the technical nature of that pump. Always look at the specifications so that they can actually you know, see how far you're going to go. But all the specs will be based off of the suction lift at about 26 feet. And that's because of physics. So what applications are these best used for? So we use trash pumps for moving large volumes of water when it comes to flooding. Uh, maybe we're on a farm setting where you're going to be uh, transferring, you know, large amounts of water from a holding tank to your sprayer application. Uh, but typically we always want to use uh, fresh water. Uh, hot water is not a good idea. It will, uh, you know, wear out the seals. So fresh, clean, cold water. Um, chemicals that are run through these, uh, we have to prevent that, uh, especially for like a lot of farm chemicals. We want to make sure that uh, if we're using an aluminum housing like this one here, um, that can react to many different chemicals. Um, you'll actually start, uh, uh, you know, the chemical process of this actually catching, uh, it won't catch on fire, but it will start to melt and uh, that'll obviously cause issues. Um, if you're using it for a chemical application, uh, select a trash pump or a semi-trash pump or a high flow pump for um, the, the, uh, the, the housing will have plastic. So aluminum, basically just for standard water, groundwater, flooding water, fresh water, um, not for drinking obviously. But we want to make sure that uh, we don't run into any issues when it comes to chemical transfer. Use chemical transfer pumps or pumps that have plastic housings. How do you get it working? So, you know, obviously you've got to gas it up. So we're going to add fuel uh, right out of the box. Uh, all of these um, R models do not come with oil, so you'll have to add oil. Um, then you're going to kind of hook up your hoses and get it prepped. Uh, before you start the actual unit up, you want to make sure that you pre-prime the system. So the housing actually has on the inlet side a rubber flapper. We call that a check valve in the industry. You want to make sure that you remove the priming plug and you fill that housing up. So you're going to pour water in before you start that unit up. You're going to seal the, uh, the plug back up, make sure that the o-ring is sealed and then you're going to start your system up. Without having that pre-primed, whether you're two feet, 10 feet, 25 feet, 26 feet away from the water source, this pump does not have the ability to draw into itself and you wanna make sure that you pre-prime the system for you know, the best um, applications for that. So make sure that you pre-prime. It also has a drain on the bottom so that when you um, you know, when you want to empty everything out, there's a drain on the bottom. So why do they call them trash pumps? Well, it allows a little bit of debris to come in. Not all pumps of this sort can be considered trash pumps. So three inch, two and a half inch and, and larger typically could be either semi trash or trash pumps. So just be mindful as you start to pump whatever that water source is coming from, whether it's a ditch, whether it's a pond, whether it's a flooding um, you know, field, whatever that might look like in your application, just make sure that you protect the pump from a whole lot of debris. You know, so like sticks and leaves and you know, garbage bags and plastic bags that might be in the ditches. Um, some of that can come through the pump and out without damaging the impeller inside. 
but you do want to prevent as much of that so you can put screens on the ends or um, you know a bucket with holes in it uh, so that you can prevent large debris. Um, it will take um, anywhere upwards from, you know five eighths to one inch in these models um, of debris uh, but if it does get clogged it does have some quick uh, quick disconnects to take the pump housing apart and you can clean that out and continue on. Talking about some of the accessories now. So what do we need? What, what, what helps us get through you know, what we're going to do for our application? So the first accessory I want to talk about is the parts that will help you hook your hoses up to the pump. So to aid in speed and uh, connection, we have quick coupler um, 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 fittings. You want to um, you know, attach them to your inlets and your outlets. So when we attach them, before we attach them, we want to add what we have is in the industry, they call it Teflon tape. Here at Princess, we call it thread sealant tape. So you want to add some within the threads to make a positive seal. Otherwise, you will have some leaking, and that's really bad on the, on the suction side. You don't want to have any sort of leak on the suction side of the pump. On the discharge, it leaks a little bit. It's not as detrimental. You will not um, you know, see an issue there. So in this case, there's two. So we have two of these that we would add to um, our pump using uh, thread sealant tape. Going from there, um, you have options. You can buy you know, your suction line by the foot or by a kit. So in this case, we have a suction line we call it non-collapsible hose so this one's a kit a 25 foot kit you'll find that all kits won't exceed the 25 foot mark because of that physics behind the suction side not allowing you to go any more than about that 25 26 foot um, suction side so we here at Prince Auto sell the 25 foot uh, length um, it comes with the quick cam locks on them so you'll just need to make sure that you get the right cam um, for the right size pump that you're looking for, whether that's two inch, in this case, three inch. Um, basically, they, this is a positive lock. It has an O-ring inside so that it creates a perfect seal. On the discharge side, we have what's called lay flat hose. Um, so depending on uh, you know, your application, how far you wanna go, what type of pump you've bought, you know, try not to exceed the distance that the, uh, the pump is telling you that it can move, otherwise known as the head. So we do carry kits. We also carry the, you know, the bulk hose so you can uh, buy it by the foot, whether it's, you know, two feet to, you know, you know the hundred foot, whatever it is you want to buy. And um, these kits also come with the quick cam locks. And uh, the beauty about these is you can just roll them up and you're just going to uh, you know, store them for, e for easy store. Whereas the suction side, you know, that's a little bit more bulky. Um, you can use suction hose on the discharge. Um, it's just costly and uh, large lengths of these uh, can become very um, heavy and cumbersome. You never want to use lay flat discharge hose on the suction side because it's not rigid and you'll, um, you'll have issues with your pump. An option to have uh, on the suction side end that goes into the water source is what we call a foot valve. Um, the foot valve is simply a screen on this side and inside it has a rubber flange. We call that a check valve. So it's similar to an inline check valve except this one goes down into the water source and as the pump moves water through it'll clear that rubber flange and it'll block all that fluid once the pump possibly stops or you need to adjust all that fluid between the pump and the fitting here will stay within that so you don't have to reprime your system every time you pull the hose out of the water or maneuver to get a better pumping um, you know situation so foot valves they're not mandatory but they are a great option um, if you want to maintain your prime, especially if you're in a flooding situation and you don't want to have to, you know, take reprime, take the, the, the priming plug off and, and go through that process. Because it does take a few minutes 
at times, depending on your distance, for that water to come back up into the pump. So foot valves, great option when it comes to your trash pumps. Now, if you're assembling, whether it's your hose assembly or attaching a hose to the foot valve, um, clamps. Clamps are super poor, uh, important when it comes to um, you know, water pumps. We want to make sure that you have a good set of clamps um, and uh, use more than one. Don't just use you know, one, um, especially on the suction side, again, to prevent any sort of leaks or pinhole leaks. You'll have issues with uh, the, the pump drawing in. We want to make sure that we use clamps. Um, I typically, uh, when I do um, these setups, I'll typically use three and I'll offset the, um, the, the screw mechanism. So I'll actually offset them and that way I get a good bite everywhere around that hose or that uh, fitting. Um, if we attach them, you know, the same side, you're putting all the pressure along here. You may start to get a bowing action and distort that and create a little uh, a gap. So hose clamps uh, come in a variety of different sizes. Um, you know, you can't have too many when it comes to uh, clamps. That's the major accessories. Um, there's many more, but these are the these will get you going, and um, you know that'll that'll get your system on the on the on the ball. So some tips and tricks. So tips would be more so you know if you don't go with a foot valve. Um, and you're in a ditch or something like that where there, there could be a large amount of degree, uh, debris. Um, basically, you could get a, you know, a five gallon bucket, uh, punch a whole bunch of, you know, small drill, a whole bunch of holes in it, uh, take a couple of rocks, um, tie the, the suction line onto the handle of the bucket, submerge it in the water, and that can create a screening effect. When it comes to storing these, because we don't typically use these all the time, we're only using them for you know, a specific application, whether that's flooding or for ag work or for whatever that is, your irrigation or maybe fire prevention, um, they will be stored for periods of time. Uh, make sure that you always add a fuel stabilizer or empty the fuel out. Um, sea foam's a great option if you add that in. Um, that can, you know, prevent any kind of um, fuel situations going bad, but there's always uh, an option when it comes to uh, fuel stabilizers or just emptying out the, the gas, running it uh, dry. Some people like that way. Some people like adding the fuel stabilizers. You want to check the oil frequently. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're using your, your uh, water pump that it sits flat like it is on the, the table here. You want to make sure that that sits flat. There is an oil sensor in that engine that if you're on a, you know, a incline or a decline, you may have enough oil for that system to run. But as you start to change its degree, that oil may come away from the sensor and you might actually have the pump shut down. So that can get frustrating. So just make sure that the, the, uh, the frame and the engine and the pump are all fl as flat and level as possible and that will help prevent uh, that oil running away from the, uh, the sensors. Well, that's it. Thank you for tuning in to Tech Tips with Mike T's water pumps version, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Have a great day.